Haha, <laughs> look at him run. The disgusting pile of stinking human remains smell strongly of blood and the first stages of decay. Yummy. The arms, legs, and organs were here are heaped together like stacked firewood, leaking blood and gore across the floor. That rhymed. The parts contained therein appear to have been sliced away from the parent body rather than torn or bitten. Judging by the clean edges on the cuts, the blade used to sever these parts was extremely sharp. This is a whole world of messed up gremlin. Isabel takes a moment to suppress a wretch. You think the killer stashed these here? They're stacked. They've been organized. This is our killer, all right. Ah, I didn't do it right. Looking closer at the pile, one part stands out. It's a severed forearm, and it's covered in tattoos, words in a Slavic language, and a shining lighthouse adorned the forearm. And ring-like images are linked on each finger. On the back of the hand, there's a skull inside a square. Whoever owned this arm isn't likely to be Wimpoan, as that tattoos look like they were poorly drawn and inked by hand, rather than machine. Most likely Russian criminal tattoos. Okie dokie. There's another thing. Storm train. Despite the darkness, you see something glitter at the edges of the drain. Looking closer, it appears to be a necklace chain of some kind. It's become caught in the drain's grate, narrowly avoiding falling down into the deep pit. Let's take that necklace. Lifting the necklace out of the drain, you turn it over in your hand. It's a simple silver pennant on a chain. Silver pennant depicts a long-tailed bird in flight. A magpie. Yeah, I think she's dead. I smell a rat. Oop. Pretty more, more like I smell a bunch of Russian gangsters. Must be where that arm came from. As you round the corner, you hear voices speaking. Just loud enough for you to make out coherent sentences. The speakers are definitely not local. They speak with a slight Slavic accent, and their clothing is heavily armored. Around them are a number of crates, boxes all mostly filled. It looks like the group is packing up. Oh, shit. I cannot do... Yaroslav says the boat will be ready tomorrow morning. He's got everything arranged with the Port Authority. We move the goods to his warehouse. We'll handle them onto the ship. We can get paid right then and there. The orc spits on the ground. I'll be glad to be done with this filthy place. These all chicks. Because fuck, man, there's a lot of evil women in this game. Galena. I will too. I hate having to hide in these damn drains. It stinks down here. I can't hear the devil right running down the walkway with the meth, and it's disgraceful. We should have put up with this bullshit. Now Cassandra still isn't back from his little trip. We'll have to leave him behind if he doesn't get back soon. I know, Galena. Until Andre says we're in the clear from the triads, we can't be seen with the goods on the streets. They find us, we go back to Vladivostok in sausage casings. Those red dragon mudaki don't screw around when it comes to protecting the turf. Who knows, maybe Alexander was stupid and they caught him. Either way, we'll have to lug this crap to the drains for a few clicks. The York woman sniffs the air suspiciously, and her eyes dart toward the dark tunnel you stand in. Before you have a chance to get rid of, get out of sight, she locks eyes with you. Uh oh, this could be bad. The orc lifts her chin. There's like seven dudes down here. I don't think I could take them if we got no fight. The orc lifts her chin as she regards you. Oh, the orc lifts her chin as she regards you, cracking her knuckles. What have we here? A curious little pest coming, looking for things that don't concern him. What do you want to do with? What do we do with pests, Galena? Galena puts her hand on her shotgun's barrel. We break them, Vatilla, and then we hammer. A spike through each of their throats, so anyone who feeds their bodies know not to meddle in our affairs. I suggest you stay where you are, pest. Um, I'm uh, not here to meddle in anything. I'm just looking for a serial killer. Well, you found some friends. Us. You think you can just walk out of here to find enough? Think again. Well, uh, I don't know how that's answering her quest. That's. You can just walk out of here. Yeah, well, because I know what happened to Alexandra. That just sounds awkward. Vasilisa's eyes narrow. She uses her words through her teeth. If you become so much as touched him, your suffering will become the stuff of legend. I promise. Where is he? Uh, yeah. Chopped up in a pile of body parts. You piece of shit. What'd you do to him? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, the serial killer looking for... A serial killer I'm looking for killed him. A serial killer? Why should I believe you? 
Do you know anybody else seen who make a pile of seven body parts? Because there's one down here in the drains. You're right. That is the act of someone very thick. We can talk peacefully, but keep in your keep your hands where I can see them. Okay, where was your red headed when he disappeared? He found a key card for a stock room located behind Miss Yang's Jade Mountain restaurant. He went to check it out. We thought it might be something valuable in there. A little extra money for our time spent down here in the drains. Nah. Do you have another key for the stock room? Oh, damn, I ran voice. Yes, there were several of them in a box. We just popped the lock off and took them all. Vasilisa tells you a key card. Here. We don't have time for this. You have to move the gist gear. You want to play detective? Go right ahead. Uh, is there anything you can tell me about the murders that I might not know? You think we get out a lot? I wouldn't have even known there were, were murders if you hadn't bothered to come out to get some soy calf last week. It's none of our business. It isn't our problem, and I like it that way. Okay. See you later. Hey, again, how can I help you? Can you tell me more about Elder Magpie? Sure, what do you want to know? I found this necklace. Was this Magpie's? Did you turn the necklace over in his fingertips? Yeah, that's hers, all right. Where'd you find it? In the storm drains. It was covered in blood. Zippy takes a long, slow breath and exhales it loudly. Well, shit. Shaking his head, Zippy crosses his arms. At least she didn't disappear after all. At least not in the way I thought. If that's what you found, she's got to be dead. So why would the killer not make a mess like he did with the others? Yeah, that's what I want to find out. Good, this business keeps getting weirder and weirder. Someone killed my friend. You find him, you make him hurt for me. Let me ask you something else. See you later. Hey, he has, they say he has a key to everything. Let's see if he's got the key to magpies. Oh, see you later. Oh, fuck. And talk to, uh, Mo. Hey, get anything I can help you with? Nope, see you later, Mo. Apparently you can't help me with nothing. Nothing. Magpie stock room. Hmm. Food. Despite the table's crude construction, an artfully laid meal awaits the owner. Several small dishes are filled with pickled vegetables, while a larger plate is arranged with long slices of raw meat. The meat is a pale pinkish white, like raw pork, and it's covered in a light soy marinade. Probably the raw meat discovered that it's surprisingly tender. What's more, it has the faint aroma of marinade, which you just told me you did. It just said it was marinade. Oh, God. Ah. Uh. Mmm. Okay. As if deliberately prepared. Um... Well, they sometimes call human meat long pork. Yeah, I'm thinking there's vampires in this game, so I'm gonna leave that alone. What's this? The box is packed full of odds and ends. It's nearly overflows with a collection of knickknacks, souvenirs, and assorted personal effects. There's no rhyme or reason to the collection of items. They appear to be been thrown in haphazardly. Among the contents are charms from various temples, a wooden mask, and a paper fan. Take a look at that mask while I drink my sangria. The wooden mask is extremely light. It's been painted a pale white, and the surface is almost as smooth as porcelain. Delicate features and lifted eyebrows are matched with bright red lips and delicately, delicately carved teeth. The teeth have been stained a deep black. Interesting. Time the charms. The small charms are square cloth packets. Each approximately one inch wide and three inches tall. They come in a variety of bright colors and are embroidered with characters for prosperity, peace, wealth, and protection. Inside each of the beer appears to be a folded paper prayer or fortune rich written in Japanese. Let's examine that fan. When folding the fan, you'll tilt it up toward the light to examine it. The image depicts an East Asian city from the 19th century or earlier. Curved roofs at sunset beside a deep blue river. Two ships sail down the river which is in turn spanned by a long wooden bridge. In the foreground, laborers carry buckets along the shore as a man on horseback rides in the opposite direction. 
In the distance, a pair of large red buildings dominate the skyline. One large temple hall and a five-tiered pagoda. As you step away from the box, you hear a slight click in the distance. The sound of the door's latch shutting. You are no longer alone in the stock room. Hmm. One guy, he's got a samurai sword. St a katana. Standing before you is a man clad in heavy armor and bearing a katana on his hip. His skin is an ashen gray. His eyes dead white. His teeth are jagged and appear quite sharp. This is no man. This is a ghoul. The ghoul's blind eyes search back and forth as it regards you. It cannot see you, but you have a sense that knows exactly where you are at all times. Ah, a hired gun. No doubt brought to bear against me by the Wipo and Elders, means by which they can lift the curse plaguing them. I salute your tenacity, but I wonder, will you hear me out before raising your weapon, or kill me? Well, you don't seem to be interested in eating me. I should have done it differently, Damon. Yes, I am not only talking, I am reasoning as well. Since you have not attempted to kill me, your own higher facilities are engaged. I am a curiosity to you. Faculties. Higher faculties. I don't know why I said facilities. Oh well. The ghoul bears his teeth, breath rasping over them as he inhales. You wish to know not only what I am, but what I have done. As for who, you may call me Gaishu. Uh, I know you are the, the one who's been killing the Wimpone Elders. You are correct. I've killed all the Wimpone Elders to date. The only Elder Magpie was according to my initial plan. I regret the death of the other Elders, but it was necessary. Uh, explain yourself. This affair began simply enough, as you may surmise. I am not someone who can be seen in public without great risk. The Wimpone Gardens is an excellent place to hide. No police or tribe presence and minimal interest in things that lurk in the shadows. Unfortunately for me, Elder NG discovered me through communion with her spirits. Rather than kill or chase me away, she came to me with a proposition. NG and the other elders were having problems with one of their number. An elder named Magpie had been holding out many of their plants hostage and would not budge. They could not remove Magpie, however, because her services were too useful to the Wimpones at large. NG offered me payment to dispose of Magpie, and I accepted. Wu shoots a sidelong glance, tusk bared as he grits his jaw. Why the hell are we talking to this thing, Gremlin? It's a goddamn ghoul, and you know what they're like. Really? What pray tell am I like? All teeth and claws and bad manners, I expect. Gashu's tone is amused, despite the harshness of his rasping voice. Really? You want to crack jokes, you cannibal? Who takes an involuntary step forward, raising his rifle? You're the kind of monster that devoured a family just because it's convenient. Remember the 162's gremlin? He's just like them. The one, uh, the 162's were a gang woo in the Barrens. Like that makes a bit of difference. Go on then, talk to the monster. But I'm keeping my finger on the goddamn trigger. I believe that we were speaking of the Elder's plans to have me kill Magpie. Surely you must be a little curious about that. I've heard of Magpie, but her shop's still locked up. Naturally, it would keep her servers under lock and key to avoid any awkward questions about her whereabouts. I was thorough in disposing of her, as our contract stipulated. She was to simply disappear without a trace, a task that was easy enough to accomplish. I disposed of Magpie's body by emptying the blood in her bathroom. Then I cut her up into more portable pieces. Those were placed in a plastic tarp. I took to the storm drains and hit. Gaishu nonchalantly waves a hand, his tone flat and unconcerned. It's unfortunate that my survival depends on consumption of raw, metahuman flesh. I knew not to eat that. Letting such nourishment go to waste would be a foolish error. But, uh, why kill the other elders then? Oh, why'd you kill the other elders then? I contacted the elders, not in person, of course. And they arranged to exchange payment. I assumed that since the job was done, NG would be a woman of her word. Bearing his teeth, Gaishu hisses his next words across clenched teeth. I was mistaken. Sangria! Mm. I arrived at the nearby parking garage the elders had told me about. They cleared out the other Wimpoans under some pretense. 
but I'm not sure what ruse they used. The elders never showed up. Instead, several members of the Hong Kong police force arrived. They were more heavily armed than usual, so I expect they knew something of my nature. I saw a scar on the concrete from the bullets and a blade. You killed them with a sword? And my hands, yes. My blindness precludes the use of a ranged weapon. Unfortunate, since I was an excellent shot before I became infected. But my skills in grappling and kinjutsu have only increased. A battle of swords is a clash of souls. Mine was stronger than theirs, and they perished. A betrayal of that sort cannot stand. Not only was I not paid for my time and effort, the Wempoan elders treated me like a common animal. And I am so much more than that. Reputation is everything, and I had none. I had hoped to build a network of contacts so I would be able to continue finding work, but with that treachery, my hopes were dashed. I decided to become the monster that they feared. One by one, I have eliminated them. They know how to contact me. I could have ended their nightmare at any time by making amends. I would have asked for more money, but I would have ceased my hunt. But I would have se I would I would have asked for more money, but I would have ceased my hunt. Yet they did not. Instead, they contacted you, no doubt asking you to limit me where the police had failed. So ask yourself, what now? What will you do? What will you attempt to finish what the Wupons have started? Will you treat me with the same humanity I have shown you? Let me ask you some questions. Did you eat the elders? Some of them, not all. My condition requires that I consume raw metahuman flesh. I do not require a great deal to survive. Perhaps three to four pounds per week. Consequently, there is a vast, m vastly more supply than demand. Is this from your armor? Damn it, I forgot to do my voice. Ah. Yes, I feel a ragged edge on one shoulder plate. I assumed it was removed when one of the police officers shot me with his rifle. The hazards of war include unkept attire, unfortunately. Oh, why would the others have you killed instead of paying you? Any number of reasons. They are notorious cheapskates. We'll always try to save money when dealing with outsiders. Damn, that's a pretty significant money-saving attempt. It could be that their natural inclination towards profit. They may regard me as subhuman and therefore unworthy of respect. It could be that I felt I was too dangerous to allow to live. It could even be that they simply did not like me. The net result is the same, however. They reneged on a deal we brokered and attempted to have me killed. A message must be sent. Blood must be paid. If they have hired you to kill me, they have obviously not learned their lesson. Uh, if I let you live, what will you do? Kill the rest of the elders. Anyone else they send to exterminate me. It's a matter of survival. Should I ever have the opportunity to work freelance again, potential employers need to understand the price of betrayal. These murders are my curriculum vitae in revenge. I made my decision. Hey, come and work for me. I can be your face. Oh, what will it be then? What will you do? How will the story end? Come and work with me. I can be your face. Curious offer. What are the elders? We all made a satisfaction killing them? I want to see what they have to say first. Hmm. I would counsel you not to believe their words, but you have the sound of one who is weary as a matter of course. Very well. Let us wait until a little bit later in the night. Most pedestrians will be off the street, and it will be easier for us to approach the Wampoa without being noticed. Oh, that sounds like a good plan. Later night. Later that same night. Damn, still. Can't. I don't see where her shop is. Oh, shit. No, oh, well. Go and see if I got enough. The Wimpoa. Elder NG, let's see what you have to say for yourself, Elder NG. Hiring somebody to murder your fellow elder that's pretty damn low. As you approach Elder NG, her eyes widen, her mouth falls open, and the veins in her neck bulge. What are you doing? You brought this thing into our home? Quick, kill it before it kills us! Porter helps his pistol warily, but does not aim it at anyone. Yeah, I have to say, this isn't a good idea. Why the hell is a ghoul in here? Why is it wearing armor? Calm yourselves, I am not a nit. Your elders know this intimately. Gaishu bares his teeth in a rictus grin as he turns to face NG. Good evening, Elder NG. I can smell your fear. And I'm glad of this. 
means you are learning the price of betrayal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell's going on here? Can someone explain to me why the ghoul was talking? Gaishu had a contract with the elders, and they betrayed him. You dare to accuse us of conspiracy with a monster and covering it up? You're insane. This very idea is preposterous. Pre preposterous. Ugh. Preposterous. There. Porter nods at the elders, looking back at you with a wary expression. I'm interested in hearing what kind of evidence you have to support this theory, Gremlin. As far as I can tell, this monster killed Tong and the others. That makes him a threat that should be eliminated. Uh, the eldest hide got you to kill Elder Magpie. Make it look like Chewie disappeared. You believe this, Vermin? This creature that feasts on metahuman flesh? That kills and dismembers our tribesmen? You're a naive and foolish man, if that's the case. Inji spits on the ground in front of Gaishu. What proof do you have that Magpie is dead? Inji, please. It matters where the elders are accused of breaking our law. The other elders ju generally judge them. It matters where all of them have been accused. I am authorized to act as a judge. Make your case, Shadowrunner. I found ne Magpie's necklace. Or I found Magpie's necklace in the stolen drains. Porter takes a moment to examine the necklace. He nods at you. Oh, this is definitely other Magpie's. If you found it in the storm drain, that's suspicious. But hardly proof on its own. Of course, it's not proof. The number of things lost down storm drains in Hong Kong is number in the tens of thousands per year. While unusual, it's hardly evidence of foul play. She uh, hasn't been seen in a month. Not by anyone. She wouldn't just disappear like that. That may be unlikely. Or, that may be unlikely, but it's hardly impossible. You haven't established that the elders were involved. All you've done is make suppositions about it. What about the fight with the Hong Kong police for- oh. What proof do you have that we hired and betrayed this creature? I don't sit by and listen to idle accusations without any kind of concrete evidence to back it up. What about the fight with the Hong Kong police force? What do you... What do you mean? What does this have to do with the elders and the ghoul? The evidence in the garage points... Oh, uh, the evidence in the garage points to a fight with someone using a sword. We allowed p police in the Wimpong Garden because they were hunting someone. They never told us who or why they were looking for their quarry. It didn't have anything to do with us. Kai Shu hisses through clenched teeth addressing Porter Lamb. I was the only... I was only in the garage to collect payment from them. The ordinary residents were warned of the HKPF's arrival were gone by the time I arrived. That's suspicious, I admit. Porter regards the elders for a long moment. It still doesn't prove the elders knew it was the ghoul. This is a piece of, uh... Or, this is a piece of guy whose armor I found in the garage. The markings on it prove it. He point out the armor's markings to Porter, and he nods with some satisfaction. This is from El Arma, definitely. But how does it prove the elders knew of the ghoul's existence? The police officers were abnormally armed and armored. With much heavier gear than a normal patrol, they were armed with armor piercing and discarding sabo rounds. That's hardly standard issue. Lesser weapons wouldn't have broken that armor plate. If all they were looking for was a common fugitive, why be prepared for a fight of that magnitude? Obviously, they knew what they were searching for. That doesn't mean we did. You Wimpoans don't allow police inside the area. Why make the exception this time? The police were, the police were polite. They asked our permission to enter. They were hunting a normal poem. What was the reason for us to allow them in? Porter considers this for a moment and shakes his head. Uh, that doesn't add up, NG. Why would the police ask for entry now? They've never been polite before, and they've always tried to force their way in here. It just doesn't ring true to me. Did you ask them to come in order to hunt down this school? Preposterous, Porter. You know... Preposterous, Porter, you know that our community is like. We wouldn't lie to cover something like this. The ghoul's been lying the entire time, trying to cover his tracks. He still brutally murdered several elders. Oh, that's true. These murders were vicious and cruel. Porter fixes you with a hard stare. I don't see any way to explain that. This ghoul was a monster for how he killed Tong and the others. Uh, Tong wasn't tortured. There was no astral residue of pain or fear. He didn't even feel the blow. That's correct. I struck a single blow while his back was to me. His death was instant. Regrettable that he had to die for your folly, NG, but necessary to protect my reputation. NG glares at Gaishu in stony silence before addressing Porter. You cannot believe what these people say. They are not to be trusted. Even if this is true, he still killed Tong. Porter looks back at NG, his expression flattened without emotion. Maybe so. 
But a monster would not take Tong's suffering into account. He may be a killer, but he's not heartless. The, the scene of Tong's murder, like the others, was a deliberate sham. It's made to look more horrific than it was. I believe ya. Blood smeared in the walls, the removal of his skin, that's a scene designed to evoke horror, not the scene of an actual fight. Elders, what do you have to say in response? This is a farce. We have dedicated ourselves to protect the Wampoan tribe and everyone who lives in Wampoan Gardens. Do you really believe outsiders and monsters over our word? We who have only tried to end the killings. You've been duped, Porter. You and this Shadow Runner. I concur. Porter, you know me. You know what kind of person I am. I wouldn't be part of the kind of killing of another Elder. I can't believe we're even entertaining this notion. Now we have to defend ourselves. We should be disposing of this ghoul instead. Tang narrows his eyes at you, hissing. I think you'll forget this. If you think I'll forget this, you're sorely mistaken. I will not tolerate this kind of insult. The elders were all too happy to have the red spears move into the garage. Almost like they wanted to keep anyone curious about the fight away. That's right, Ip. You even told me not to go out. That go out. What happened? To go find out what happened with the fight. You said the red spear gangers were moving in. And leave them alone. Why would you tell me not to look into it? I was only trying to protect you from the red spears. They're dangerous. Which is what I wanted to do with them directly. That's all I've got. Alright, I think I have an idea of what's going on here. And? What do you believe the real story is? The waters are muddling this matter. The ghoul seems to be telling some of the truth. I respect that, but the fact remains he's a dangerous creature killed many of us. He must die. Oh. I'm not going to let you kill guys, she'll get my word. You two must die. Ip! Oh shit. Gunfight! Um. Sorry. Duncan. Take out that drone controller. This drone ain't worth shit. See how bad this gets. Ah, oh, shit, mage. the mage. Close. 
Bam. Got the sucker. Guys, shoot. Go murder. Yeah, he's still my movement, but I'm not moving, so it doesn't matter. Reload. Haha, -ha, you're out in the open, bitch. Ah, oh, damn it. Gotcha, suckers. Well, that's not good. This is accomplished. No more betrayers alive. No more worry than others may think that he can take advantage of me. Be the way, I look forward to our new business partnership. Uh, it's not exactly what I had in mind. Um, but I gave him my word that I wouldn't let him die. Well, that was bad. Hopefully my funds are in escrow. Confirm.